Good morning and welcome to part two of my double shot of content here on The Angry Astronaut, a double shot of bulletins to be precise today. And yes, one of them was about alien civilizations, interstellar civilizations. And by the way, I am not trying to be in any way dramatic about that. I feel that the evidence that I was researched last night that came out in a paper released by the University of Nebraska, their astronomy department is a strong indicator of the existence of an interstellar civilization nearby. And by the way, it's not me saying that, it's actually them, the astronomers at the University of Nebraska, who have made that claim, suggesting at least the possibility of an interstellar civilization existing right in our backyard. So check that out. I have it linked at the end of this video, but let's move on to S20. So recently, I have made the probably ill-advised decision of wading into the field of speculating on all of these different prototypes that SpaceX has been manufacturing lately, joining the ranks of the tank watchers, and really, I'm not sure if I should be doing that, because I haven't spent nearly as much time watching this stuff as many other people have. Also, I don't have the engineering experience, the technical experience, to really solidly talk about what sort of components are being added, the exact nature of those components, what it might suggest about design, and a lot of my opinions are frankly coming from other tank watchers, people who are more informed about these things than I am. A lot of this is not really my own opinion, but rather theirs, and I freely admit that I could be wrong about all of this. But the biggest question, the biggest mystery right now is the mystery of S26. What's really happening with this prototype? What's it for? There have been all kinds of speculation about it as to what sort of purpose it might serve, and I want to show you everything that people have been speculating, all of the different functions that this strange bullet-shaped ship might actually serve, and also its successor, S-27, in SpaceX's overall plan to finally send Starship to orbit. So this is one of the more popular theories out right now, that because Starship is ultimately going to need a fuel depot of some kind in orbit in order to be able to make journeys to the moon, Mars, or virtually any place else, they're going to need an expendable, simple Starship designed simply to carry fuel and nothing else. And by the way, this is one of the most startling visual examples that I've come across of Starship getting frost so to speak, as you can see the frost line climbing ever higher on the ship. This was created, by the way, by Starbase Watcher, and the footage is from Lab Padre. Please subscribe. So the idea, of course, is to put a simple ship into orbit and then gradually fill it up using tankers with liquid oxygen and liquid methane until you have all 1,200 tons worth of fuel on board, and then you transfer that fuel to the the ship that you intend to send to the moon or to Mars or to any place else. This does make a great deal of sense to me. However, it does seem to be a bit early in the process to be designing something like this, given the fact that Starship hasn't even made it to orbit yet. And speaking of getting beyond orbit, well, we also need to talk about what NASA desperately wants SpaceX to build as rapidly as possible in order to facilitate Artemis 3 and that is Lunar Starship. Lunar Starship is not going to have flaps, it's not going to have fins, it's simply going to be deployed to lunar orbit, pick up the astronauts from the Lunar Gateway, or perhaps from an Orion spacecraft in orbit around the moon, transport them to the lunar surface, and then return them to lunar orbit to the Orion or to the Lunar Gateway, and then ultimately return to Earth orbit in order to be refueled, although the initial 
initial missions of Lunar Starship do not involve it returning, but rather for it to be fully expendable, being used for only one time to journey to the moon. So that also is a possibility, and I find it to be a very compelling possibility, given the fact that NASA desperately needs Lunar Starship to be completed by 2026 at the latest. However, if S-26 is indeed the first prototype of Lunar Starship, then why does the nearly identical S-27 have a so-called PEZ dispenser designed to be used to deploy Starlink version 2 satellites, which by the way the Starlink constellation so desperately needs right now? Why put a PEZ dispenser on an expendable Starship in the first place? Is it just simply to demonstrate that you can build something like that? if you have to? Or is it because SpaceX is concerned that the flaps and fins version of Starship complete with all of the heat tiles may be a little too complicated and a little too fragile to try to put it through a supersonic test right off the bat? They might want to test a far more simple bullet-like ship with their first orbital attempt before they try it with a more complicated ship. And there are other factors to consider. As we can see with S24, the heat tiles have a tendency of becoming disconnected and in some cases just don't seem to be very stable, don't seem to be very solidly connected to the ship. If this is the case, if you have a shower of heat tiles falling away from the ship when it passes through Max-Q, that could be problematic. Would it not be simpler and less risky to send up an expensive starship on your first orbital flight, or perhaps even with your first couple of Starlink missions before you actually attempt to use a more complicated ship designed for re-entry. Now, ultimately, I think that the flaps and fins starships absolutely have to fly. Full reusability is an absolute essential if this ship is going to be as competitive as SpaceX wants it to be. However, in these early stages, when SpaceX cannot afford a significant problem on the pad and would also prefer to have a successful orbital test rather than some sort of anomaly halfway up to the stratosphere, well, a simple starship would be a lot safer for your first flight. However, there are other matters to consider as well, foremost of which I believe that SpaceX themselves are not entirely certain as to how they're going to proceed with their first orbital launch either. I think that is highly dependent on how all of these ships flesh out over the course of their testing. If one ship proves to be more promising than the next, that's the one that they're going to use. And we have seen this develop during the testing process. S-26 was put through a cryo test once and then put on a crane. Everybody thought that it was going to be taken back to Starbase and then the crane was disconnected and it was put through a second cryo test. Now it's back on the crane. We are assuming that it's going to be taken back to Starbase at this point but we can't say for certain. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize here. There's really no way to be absolutely certain as to what SpaceX intends to do in the near or distant future. I think it's greatly dependent on how the tests turn out, which is why they test in the first place. And SpaceX has the luxury of quite a number of prototype ships that they could attempt to use for an orbital flight, any one of which could turn out to be the best choice for the job. And of course, they're going to go with the best choice for the job. And finally, we need to talk about the last possible scenario, that S-26 is simply a pressure vessel, a simplified pressure vessel to be used in order to test the viability of new tank designs and other new modifications that are being made to Starship. And of course, S-26 does have new modifications that S-24 and S-25 do not. So that also is a possibility, not an exciting 
exciting one, but very possible indeed. However, the problem with this explanation is the fact that we have S27 with more additions, including that Pez dispenser. Why the similarity between the two ships if it's just a pressure vessel and S27 has more ambitious plans in the future? Well, only time is going to tell, and I think that all of these things are going to develop very, very soon, and I could not be more excited. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, hit those notification bells, guys. It's very important to keep the views coming to my channel, and also please check the description for various ways to support my content and my return to Boca Chica along with Cape Canaveral and the maiden flight of Vulcan Centaur. And as always, stay angry about space.